Well, first and foremost, thank everybody, uh, you know, for for tuning in. My name is Ogden. Um, I'm the founder of FTS. Super excited to bring this panel, um, the the from the ground up panel today. I think this is going to be a really great conversation. Um, really, just kind of about building, you know, real foundations in a business, um, you know, especially within the music industry. And I think, given every panelist kind of like individual past. Um, you know, this is going to be a really great conversation. And I really want to focus this discussion on really just kind of helping the, the next generation of managers and artists kind of navigate their way through their own career. So, you know, really just being able to give a lot of great practical advice and, and really just kind of using your stories as uh, just as as blueprints for for the next generation. So I think what we could probably do is maybe just really quick, have everybody introduce themselves and who they're working with, um, you know, probably something like, 10, 15 seconds, nothing super long. Um, and we can start with Payne and then we'll go with Barry, Carter, and then Pat. Yeah, Philip Payne from Garland, Texas, live in Austin, Texas. Um, I work with Tory Lanes. I've been working with him for about 13 years now on the management side. Boom, now um, transitioning to the um, A&R side and, and we're also developing a label as well. So. Um, okay, me, <laughs> um, Barry Hefner. Um, I have JID, Earth Gang, Neonza, Hardo, Metro Mars, Benji, a bunch of artists. Um, I represent since the 80s. I'm the president of the label. Um, that's, that's my spiel right now. Hi, I'm Kenny Carter. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I represent um, South Coast Music Group. I'm the, the EVP of South Coast Music Group. I work with the baby, Stana, Black Zach, um, Tootsie, Big Mally, Tia Corinne. I also have another label that I just started. Um, just did a partnership with Empire um, called Social Currency Enterprises, where I'm developing talent. Got Zeta Goat, Tiana's Rose, um, Young Sunny Boy, and Lil John 4K. Uh, my name is Patrick Afeku. Everybody know me as Certified Pat. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, represent Generation Now, head of NR. Um, also have my own company called a Certified Agency. Uh, Generation Now, we developed Lil Uzi Vert. He signed to us. Um, through my uh, management company, I managed Playboy Cardi uh, his first three years of his career. And uh, as of right now, um, I manage Earl on the Beat, uh, artist by the name of La uh, singer songwriter named Landstrip Chip, and another artist by the name of uh, Kaluminati. Right now, out of generation now, um, actually working directly with Jack Harlow. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, um, you know, I think I kind of want to just start off by really just asking, um, you know, all of you guys obviously heard the, the artists that you're working with. You heard their music and, you know, you, you pretty much fell in love, right? And, and I think after that point, when you realize, okay, this is an artist that I love, I love their music, I love their aesthetic and everything that they're doing, what was your first step forward after that? Like, how were you thinking about strategy? How were you thinking about taking this person from somebody that you love to then trying to showcase them to everybody else to say, hey, you guys should love this person too? Um, I go first. I, fell, I, I didn't fall in love with my artist's music at first. I fell, I, I fell in love with their vision. And what I thought it could be. The music was, you know what I'm saying? Like the music is usually raw when you get an artist in the early stages. So you got to have a vision to even understand where the music can go. I fell in love with their potential and the vision for real, for real. It really, really, it wasn't really the music. I heard something, I was like, this could be special, but it wasn't, it wasn't really the music at first. It was more so what I, I saw the vision for it and the potential of what it could be. So that was that was kind of like my first, my first introduction to my artist. I uh, can definitely relate to that as well. And um, Sasha had brought Tori up to me. My partner who also manages Tori had brought Tori to me a couple times and I didn't bite. And then he played a record, a record called Remembrance Day. And I fell in love with the record. And then I met Tori and I met a super ambitious kid, a super super chip on his shoulder. And I was in the same place. I was 23 at the time. I had just left the University of Texas off a football scholarship. I thought I was going to the NFL. It didn't pan out. So now I am starting from the bottom 
as far as the music industry and trying to find my way and trying to find a name in the industry. And I had the same chip on my shoulder. And that is something that we could relate to. We, we both felt that like, yo, people were sleeping on us. And we both felt that, that, that um, we both just had the, the drive to want to be the best and want to want to really take this thing to the, the biggest level we could. Um, I, I can go ahead. Go ahead, Cam. Well, with baby, it was the it was the same thing. I, I fell in love with the vision. I fell in love with the confidence that he had, and just knowing that he was the next thing. He was the super. Like he knew he knew before anybody knew, and with somebody that confident, it was just mm-hmm. it was easy to build on. You know what I'm saying? You you know, like he he convinced me. <laughs> like mm-hmm. so, it, it really went the music. The music just came. I understood he had a pocket and he and he knew what it was. It didn't sound like anything, so we was gonna have to educate everybody on it. But you know what I'm saying? I just believed him. Um, and I mean, we're pretty much saying the same things as far as like when the first when we first met when I first we call Uzi Vert. When we first met Vert, like we Cannon Cannon played me his record, and I was like, "Yo, this this kid is he dope because he had a different kind of energy." But it wasn't until you met him in person, then when you understood that the energy went with a narrative that he already had in his head and a narrative that I feel like he taught the whole team on which direction he wanted us to go with his career. What's so crazy about everybody on this phone call saying that, I think Ogden, which is one of the most important things is a lot of people A&R with, with data these days. What you just heard from all four of us was, you know, it's always about the vision and the artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the most important thing. Like they say, like everybody basically saying, I got sold on what I felt like an artist could be, not what was in front of me. And that's and that's the and that's the true art of what you're talking about, like what's kind of missing from the game is being able to see something before it happened. So we're going to always be on the forefront of a lot of things, because I think everybody here, like it's like understanding and seeing something in person. Everybody ain't got that talent to see something in somebody else before it happens. It's just, they ain't got that. Right, right. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. So from that, at what point do you start trusting the data over your own instincts, right? Because the numbers may tell you one thing, like, hey, we should be going this route, but your instincts may tell you something else. So how are you guys kind of navigating or finding that balance between maybe what the data or the numbers or maybe even the labels are saying versus what you might know is right for your artists? I mean, I think the data, the data can tell you a lot of things. Mm-hmm. You know, the data can tell you a lot of things. When it comes to touring, data is super important. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can know where there's a buzz at, and I can figure out, like, what areas I'm getting a lot of my pool from, and I can go into those areas, and I can build. And you got to look at it as a virus. You know what I'm saying? It starts at one place, and then it spreads. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you can look at it like that as far as regions. You can look at data as far as you put out a mixtape, I'm pretty sure everybody on this phone has done it. You put out something and you may have an idea in your head that this is the one, but the fans may choose another one. And it's it's stupid to ignore that. You know what I'm saying? Like to just look over it, but you know, it could, it could tell you that, but culturally that can also mislead you. You know what I'm saying? Like it can also mislead you just because a song is the biggest song. Don't always mean it's the most, it's the most impactful song. You know what I'm saying? Like it 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 can sometimes mislead you just depends on, what you looking for in the numbers? You gotta know what's you gotta know what's behind the numbers that, that really tells a story for real, for real. Because a lot of things like dealing with dealing with say like even Jack, like a lot of po- a lot of people didn't believe in Jack, but the things that we saw was he would always be able to connect, and he was a great performer. Um, his music was always he always made good music, but we all know it's more than the music. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's more of a personality and a vision and which way you want to go. So um, Jack was Jack was something different because, well, a lot of our, even Cardi was different because nobody even really believed in Cardi. Like you just had to understand that he his cultural relevance was something different and it meant something because I can still remember being at the label and nobody paying no attention to him, but we still doing shows and he's still getting like 10,000 a show at the time. And the label wasn't even engaged in what he had going on. So, you know, it's just the numbers. 
the numbers, some, just like you said, could be misleading until it reaches a boiling point, and then eventually everything, the culture and the numbers, going to end up connected. Yeah. All right. I agree. I uh, definitely agree um, because there were times early in Tory's career where we thought some mixtapes were hit and they didn't, and we thought some records were it and they didn't. But what we did know is when he walked into a room, he had an effect on people, and he had a it was something that just conv- that conviction when when he spoke when he when he when he did his shows, it was something special there. And that's, it's just, there's some things that data can't, can't, can't explain, honestly. Right, right. And Payne, I kind of want to stay there for a little bit, right? Like, especially when you guys were building Tory from the very, very early stages, were you guys focused on building him as a quote unquote brand, or were you just more focused on his musical output? Because obviously Tory is somebody who doesn't stop recording. Um, yeah. So I'm wondering, was that part of the brand from the very beginning or were you guys looking to go a different direction or how did that develop? No, early early on, it, it was just about getting getting his just due because we knew this kid was super, super talented. We knew we could rap, we knew we could sing. And it was to preach that like, yo, he can make it and not be put in a box because so many record labels and so many people um, would tell him like, yo, you got to choose one. Even our last situation, they would tell like, yo, you have to choose one. You either, either rap or, or you either have to sing. And he he never let anybody put in a in a box. And that's, that's, that's one thing I'm, and like you said about his worth ethic, that's one thing that I definitely don't take for granted when working with artists. Like some artists, like when it comes to their creative process, they need certain things to be right. They need a mood. They need kind of a vibe to be in a place where they can create music. With Tory, he just wakes up every morning. He feels like people are on his heels. So he has, he just, when it comes to work, that guy wants to work. That guy wants to go on tour. That guy wants to record music. Like the, the, his vision from the beginning was like, yo, I want to be the biggest artist in the world. And if I don't achieve it, I'll die trying. And that was, that was it. And as he grew older, he was like, okay, I want to build, um, one umbrella. I want to build my my these other artists that I have under me that that are very very talented as well. So as he got older, that's when he kind of transitioned into building his clothing brand and being an executive. Right, right. You know, and, and Carter, I kind of want to jump over to you. Um, you know, especially within the past year, year and a half or so. Um, things have obviously continued to kind of take off with, with where you guys are going. And so I'm wondering, how are you guys now deciding what opportunities to be able to take and which ones you shouldn't take? Because I'm sure early on, every opportunity probably sounded like a great one. and You got to take everything that you can. Now, what is you guys' decision making process as far as what makes sense for Baby or even what makes sense for, you know, you guys as a management team? I think we lost them. How do we lose them? That's okay. Well, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll still ask you guys the same thing. I mean, as you guys have continued to see your artists kind of grow and, and, and continue to see all these opportunities, how are you guys navigating and understanding which, um, which opportunities, which opportunities to take? Like, wh- how are you guys kind of coming about those decisions? Carl, are you going to answer that one? You, did you hear? No, nah, I couldn't hear my Wi-Fi over the tripping, man. I just logged back on. What, what was the question, Augie? Oh, that, that, that's okay. Uh, so basically, I was just saying within the last, you know, year, year and a half, you guys have had this, you know, just this upward trajectory, right? And I was wondering, especially in the early days, I'm sure you were taking every opportunity you could pretty much get. Now things have kind of shifted. And I'm wondering, how are you guys approaching all of the opportunities now? Because obviously, you can't take everything. So what's the thought process behind that? Just making sure it makes sense. It, it, I mean, it's, can't can't do everything. You know what I'm saying? Can't you, you know? Before it was more or less like we was chasing after the 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 things that would help us grow and the money. Now it's more or less like just focusing on the things that help us grow and and, and transcend from from superstar to mega star. You know what I'm saying? Just just those type of things. So every 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 decision is 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 well calculated and thought about before we make it. 
Right. Is that pretty much the same across the board for everybody else too? Yeah. I'm pretty here. much. Uh, definitely. Um, I think as our career grows, you definitely learn the power of no. And there, you know, all money isn't good money. And right. there are some opportunities, bro, that you can pass on in order to get the, the big one. Yeah. I mean, it just depends on what just depends on what phase of your career you're in. I mean, in the beginning, I, you know, every time I grab a new artist, you know, I have certain stages that I that I explain to the artist that we're going to have to go through. You know, the first stage is usually, you know, what I'm saying awareness. You know, you do whatever you need to do for awareness at the time, whether it's running them around, pitching them to blogs, pitching them to writers, you know, doing certain shows, taking that L, you know, just putting yourself in that position. Then we start building up enough leverage, you know, then you can start demanding a little bit more then, you know, then it's about how you're going to produce this or do that or what's it's the song, what's next. It's all depending on what phase you're in, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think every phase stems from different things. That depends on also what type of artist you got, too. You also got to know what type of artist you're dealing with. Because some people, it depends on, you know, it's all about vision. Some people just want to come in, smash, grab their bag and get up out. But if you're talking about somebody that's planning on having a career, then like Carter said or like Payne said, and I'm, I'm, I know I know Pat know, like you gotta be calculating your moves. You hold yourself out in this business, you know, you'll be here for a year or two and then it'll be over with. You gotta you gotta learn the power of no. You gotta say no. You gotta know what 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 to work on and what not to work on. And it's so important, so important to not skip steps. That's something that Tori did a really, really great job of trusting us of doing the 50 people rooms, doing the hundred people room, building that foundation because you know, when you don't have that hit, that foundation is what's going to hold you down. You know what I'm saying? Because when you do have that hit and you hit that mainstream, you got to feed those people. 100%. And, and, when, and, right. and they listen They listen to the radio. They on Spotify. So if you ain't got nothing on there, then... You ain't got shit. <laughs> They're not buying no merch, bro. They're not, they not, they not doing that, bro. But those people who, you, when you went to... Montana and all those other weird states and weird cities, and those people came and bought your merch, and they—they they, that's a story that they'll tell years and years from oh, yeah. now. Like, like, yo, you remember when Tory came to? Those people gonna hold you down when you ain't got no hit. What's so crazy is a lot of people don't understand this that you know we toured with Tory, and yeah, but we even had a project out. We toured with Tory, and I remember G getting up there. And like it, it went well for us, but I just remember his crowd was a little bit more different than what we was used to. And I remember, you know, a couple of them places it was just kind of rough for Jid, and I was like, yeah, bro, you gotta understand, they don't know you, but I'm like, they gonna remember you when you come back. And I just remember like a lot of people coming back and tweeting with his on them stage. It's like, yo, I seen him on. I mean, my first time ever seeing him was on tour with Tory. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember we was on that bus, and we was just like, damn. Dang. This nigga's way more popular than we is. <laughs> that though. shit was crazy. I'm telling you, bro, it's important because, I mean, I remember, you know, being in New Hampshire and it was about two or three people there. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. the DJ. <laughs> it's, and it's like, you know, you got to you know, like, game. Boy, yeah. You I remember part of what's so crazy is y'all came a long way, bro. Like, people don't understand how long baby had, the baby had been doing this shit. Man, yeah. a long time. Yeah. A long time, like we came from, <laughs> we came from nothing, man. So, just just to be able to, to be able to be in a position we in now, though, is, is and we look back. That's why we feel like everything that we get and we deserve versus versus you know what I'm saying it was just it wasn't given to us. We didn't get no shortcuts. We didn't get no, no 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 handouts, and we didn't skip no steps. So we yeah. like you said the 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 shows with the with the three people in there, the me, the ten people rooms and, and 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 the difference. I think the difference between what you want your artists to have is, is that ability to turn it on, regardless if it's five people in a room or, yeah, or, or five yeah. people in the room. They still gonna rock the way they supposed to rock. They still gonna, mm-hmm. gonna make that presence felt and and touch people. I think that's a, I think that's what we all was all been saying is like we is building a foundation, like really touching fans, really creating fans, and not just that that number stuff can get. You know that's where the numbers can be be um, misleading. That data could be misleading because. Yeah. It might not be real fans. It's somebody that just that's, that's just rocking with you. But when you out there and you in these streets and you going and doing them shows and you moving around, I mean, you creating something that can't nobody take from you. I tell people, never confuse the Fs, man. Never confuse the followers 
for friends or fans, my boy. Like them right. shits all no bitch. They all starts with L, but they all mean something different at the end of the day. Right. Like, all right. those ain't right. your fans, my boy. They really not. They just looking. Yeah. Very yeah. yeah, true. Right, right, right. So you know what's interesting too is I is I kind of wanna um stay at this 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 level because I think something that's really interesting is is you guys are very, very um team oriented, right? Like obviously you guys you all know that you have to rely on somebody else in order to kind of make this whole vision come together. What if you're at a point where you can't find anybody that either is believing in your vision or sees exactly what you're saying? How have you guys had to kind of go about pushing through or, or what is kind of your suggestion through that? Cause I think a lot of people kind of, they, they may be in that spot, right? Where not everybody sees the vision, not everybody is able to say, yo, I fuck with this. So how are you guys kind of going about that and still pushing through and being able to kind of build a team around that? If it's a vision for if if it's if it's your vision, you supposed to be the only one to see it. You just, gotta, you, just, you just gotta make you just gotta get people yeah. that believe in you. One hundred. One hundred. I hate that about I hate that about people, bro. I hate when like a lot of a lot of artists or a lot of managers and stuff they come up like, yeah, but what if nobody believe, bro? They don't supposed to believe. Supposed to believe. That's the problem. Yeah. Like you think that niggas <laughs> are supposed to believe. Like half of the enjoyment is proving niggas wrong <laughs> that didn't believe. Like yeah. you didn't believe. And I tried to tell you that what was gonna happen. Like that's the beautiful part of the business. It's like stepping into a room or you see some niggas one year and the same niggas that weren't really paying no attention, you come back around next year, they head on swivel. That's the yeah. that's the that's the glory in the business. They don't supposed to believe it is your vision. You yeah. are responsible for your ideas and your vision. That's it. 100 percent very very true man um i'm a testimony because last year we put out um an album chicks take five and a lot of our people um didn't really because there were so many samples because there were so many you know parts to be buttoned up didn't really believe that it would do well but it was something that we knew that Tori's core fans would really really enjoy and we knew that people would think it was unique and and um we went full 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 throttle with it we didn't we didn't care what people said we didn't care if people thought they're like yo y'all probably not gonna make that much but like we saw the end game and it ended up being his his best-selling project so too hard too thank you you. (laughs) we all we all interscope Connected on this yeah, call, which is yeah, another planet. It's dope. It's dope. Yeah. Thank you. Hard. Thing was hard. Yeah, totally hard. Period. Um, so for you guys, especially as as management, how are you guys organizing your your day to day? Right, like how are you consistently making sure that you're you know calibrated on all the opportunities, the deadlines, the finances? Like, what are your kind of um, go to? Whether it's like tools, resources, what are you guys using that maybe some other people can can kind of be able to to tap into too? I think once you get to a point where you where, where you need it, you just strong assistant <laughs> because you have a strong assistant. You can they they can remind you about a bunch of things and be able to be that buffer between stuff that they know you're not gonna do and stuff that you are gonna do. And then I mean, just like you said, it's a team game. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You 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 know your you know what you do well. You know your strengths, so you play your position. You see what I'm saying? And then the other people that you built up around the team because. People don't a lot of times most people don't understand how much work it takes to work with an artist. So they don't understand the real infrastructure and how big the team really is for just one artist. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Once you build that team, like everybody plays their role, plays their position, and everything pretty much moves smoothly. I'm gonna go with it too. I think I think what King and, and Pat said, like you assistant. Or, or your team, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, you always need to know your strong point within the team. I think a lot of the times, especially what I see with a lot of younger people, bro, everybody want to be the man so fast. And it's just like, bro, like, you got to understand how many couches I don't slept on, how many yeah. how many times I had to be the nigga that wasn't in the position that I feel like I'm moving to. And I, it's still so far to go. And, like, you got to yeah. take those – you got to take those L's. You know, I be sending a lot of people on the internet to my internships, internships, internships. Ain't now, no, nah, bro. You you think you just able to go jump into this thing and make it happen on your own? If that's how you feel about it, then go do it. Don't ask nobody for their help if that's the case. So, team assistance, understanding who you are, what you bring to the table, 
God, patience, and just being an open book and a sponge willing to learn and keep growing because this business is forever growing. Nobody knows everything. I don't care what nobody say. You don't know sometimes. Sometimes God just take the will of this shit and just take it where it want to take it. Well, you right. sometimes be like, damn, that happened today? I, I right. live on that. I live, do the work, let God do the magic. Yeah, bro. I'm like, oh, bro, that happened today? It's a couple times I was like, damn, <laughs> like, who just said <laughs> something about this? And nigga, I ain't playing that. <laughs> that was just... <laughs> Just, I totally I just kept running with it. We just ran with it. Yeah. That's, that's what they call it. stars aligned. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Keeping an open, you know, line of communication with your team. Like me, Sasha, and Troy, we talk every single day. And also, we check our ego at the door. Check right. it at the door because, like, you know, I, I think all of us are alpha males. I will, I will be honest with you. We all, we all trying to bring that bag home we all trying yeah. to you know get it at the same time we know our strengths and we know our weaknesses and we check our ego at the door and we ask for help shit is going wrong yo we ask like yo i need this yo can you do this because there are some things and some calls some relationships that they can tap into that i can't there's some relationships some calls that i can make that they can't but it is it is very important that like like you said, team is the, is the, is the, is the main thing. And we all got one goal. We want, we want Tori to be king. That's all. And as, long, as long as we all pushing that, then you know, no matter. No matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and two, especially when you guys are kind of coming from, from the ground up, I, I want to know, um, you know, what were you looking to or, or who were you looking at as far as to stay informed? You know, like how were you continually educating yourself throughout this process was it solely through experience were you guys reading anything were you you know tapped in with anybody like what was each one of you guys' experiences as far as educating yourself to get to that next level i was in the streets my boy i ain't gonna lie to you like education is experience and mistakes you know what i'm saying like it's funny bro like i watch a lot of people try to read some books and i'm not saying that you can't read a book I think everybody around here don't read that music business first edition Donald Passman book, bro. Yep. That's the first thing right you read. That's like the Bible. <laughs> and that's cool, right? But I'm going to tell you what that book don't teach you. It don't teach you intuition. It don't teach you vision. It don't teach you hustle. You know what I'm saying? It gives you the information that you need, the standard information that you need. Like, But it don't teach you. Sometimes, bro, negotiation skills, it can't come with a book. Some folks just got the gift of gab. You feel what I'm saying? Some folks can go in there and you could tell them you you, you you gonna give you 25 and they gonna walk out of that with 75 because they gonna make you believe. Hey, bro, what you talking about? Like, you ain't seen what we doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, certain things is just natural God-given talent. So for me, it's just experience. And that's like I say, man, self-awareness and ego checking is, 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 is one of the most humbling, one of the most realest things that can be said whenever you're trying to do this. The goal is to get to the, Get to the get to the, the the goal. You know what I'm saying? Whatever path you got to take is your path, but the goal is to get to the get to it. You know what I'm saying? That's the achievement. And sometimes you got to be willing to do whatever it takes to get there. So, you know, that's that's my spiel on that. And, and I think, like my my thing is, I just I got the skill set of figuring it out. And I think that's where everybody around me on the team, like, on the skill set we had was the. You got to figure it out. So experience was definitely I'll teach you. I, I ain't read a lot of books. I ain't. It's just, it's just working, just doing it. Just just saying, all right, this is the goal, this is the plan, this is how, this is how this is what we're gonna put in front of us, this is how we're gonna try to achieve it. You know, and if we if we don't know, we're gonna figure it out. If, if somebody gonna know. So yeah. and every every artist path is different, you know what I'm saying? Every every team path is different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, I come, you know, I come in with DJ drama, so we was really like some, we was really on some street shit. Like we was on some Jeezy, some Yo Gotti, some Gucci, some future shit. So Uzi was a whole different book than the book we already, you know what I'm saying? No, like we was some chitlin circuit, South Carolina, Florida, you know what I'm saying? Uh in the club niggas. That's what we were. And at the end of the day, we just we end up figuring out how to build an artist that sell tickets, how to build an artist that sell merch. You know what I'm saying? And from that perspective, once we've seen that view of the game, it changed, it changed our whole perspective on how to make money in business. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's pretty much I can I can only say it, it's it's really just experience, bro. Uh, definitely, man. Mistakes and, and and not being afraid to fail. Can't be afraid to fail because that's gonna come. You gotta learn from it. And I'm telling you, most of the things that I wanted and, and I thought that I was ready for as um a 21 year old, 22 year old, now that I've been able to accomplish them or now that I've been able to obtain them, I know that I wasn't ready. I wasn't oh, ready back then, man. But going through those going through those trials, going through those, you know, um, having to figure it out. It made me prepared. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, for you guys, when you kind of look back on some of the most memorable moments where you understood, okay, this is working, right? Like what were some of those kind of quote unquote aha moments for you guys individually? You know, when whether it was your own career or your artist career, when you look back and you said, Okay, we're on to something. What were those for you guys? No, we got two hundred thousand each. Say what happened? I said, ah, we did it. I don't, I don't, I can't even. For me, bro, I feel like I'm still trying to prove some. So, like, none of my moments are really like I told you so. You know what I'm saying? Moments like, like they are, but they aren't. Because I feel like. It's still niggas who doubting what we doing, and we still like, like, like Tory, Cardi. I mean, I feel like I got the 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 least lit artists on the on the call for real, for real. At, at, you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't never had no hit. You know what I'm saying? In terms of like where we at, you know what I'm saying? But mainstream success, like, I still feel like we ain't hit mainstream mainstream yet. But I do realize that we blessed. So for me, it's always like. I see my friends because most of the time I'm, I'm around my peers. I'm around my friends. So I'm like, I'm room for them. I'm like, damn, they, oh, my nigga's killing it. Oh, I want to kill it too. I, I can't, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, my moments is just like, they come and go. I'm always trying to figure out the next moment. So I'm never too high and low on any of them. I think they all are just stepping stones and learning experiences and you keep going. That's real. That's crazy that you say that, man, because uh, it's the same way, bro. We don't feel like, I don't feel like I'm there yet. Toy doesn't feel like we're there yet. We see, we we look up and we like, yo, there's a room that that certain people can get in that we don't feel like we're accepted in yet. And Dang. it's like that keeps you, that keeps you going, bro. It keeps you going. And you know, there's moments like you you think like, yo, will, will we ever be satisfied? And probably not. Nah. But that's what, but that's what life's about, though. <laughs> nah. That's what life's about. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about this is there's no satisfaction. Yeah. For real. I mean, oh, like, man. even you feel like the money come and then you get the money, you'd be like, uh, it still ain't enough. <laughs> you got enough. <laughs> it ain't enough. Like, Damn, it's... that nigga just bought that Rolls Royce truck. Shit. You know what I'm saying? It's always so. true. I think true. you just got to be happy with just, I think you have to find peace with knowing that you're going to keep growing and building. I think that's something the most mm. important thing. I don't think there's really a moment that's really like, I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of y'all gonna have some moments that I enjoy. It. But you know what I'm saying to them, they moment to them moment, y'all moments to me may not be the same to y'all. I can only imagine the way y'all niggas put out music. Y'all niggas don't ever seem like y'all satisfied. <laughs> man, when I but it was crazy when I saw you know Jay get nominated for a Grammy. When I saw you get like it was just like yo, it made me so happy because I know where y'all came from. Man. Yeah, like, I know where y'all came from, bro. So it was like, man. To see y'all, you know, walking the red cart like that's 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 everything, bro. To see, you like see, bro. That 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 was that that's like the greatest lowest point of my career, though. Because what I realized is, you finally get into that room, and it still ain't good enough. You like, <laughs> oh, these niggas is playing me. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm at a party I don't supposed to be at. Like, I thought I was supposed to be here, but it's like, like I don't even really want to be at this party though. Like, they playing me, like. So it mostly it was kind of like, damn, I really realized like, oh man, wow. Like we we ain't nowhere near there, but we, they just invited us. Invited us. The room. It's like, yeah. damn. Which is, you, you know. You need that too though. You need it's that. It's a learning bro. experience though. But you yeah, know, bro. it's a learning experience. It's cool though. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But it's time. always, you know, it's always good to, you know, there are certain times are there where I'll sit down and I'll be like, wow. Cause a lot of the things that we've done, like we used to dream about, and it's like, like wow, man, like, like God is good, bro. For real. Because 
you know, it wasn't like this, bro. <laughs> it wasn't always like this. It wasn't always like this, man. It wasn't always like this. And there are people who would do anything to be in our position. And it's a blessing, bro. And we can't take it for granted. My biggest moment is a tour bus. I think that's what I just realized. That you was know, probably my biggest awe moment. I mean, we had been in the car for like three years, touring the world. Man. When we got that tour bus, I was like, oh, niggas got a tour bus now. We <laughs> gotta live like this. Like we can really like, we can really like relax. There's a nigga driving us. I drove the first two years we was touring, 54 states across the country by myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that was that was probably my biggest awe moment. I was like, oh damn, we got two buses. We good, we Gucci. Right, right. Oh uh, that's yeah, crazy. No, that's perfect. Uh, keep like, on. Yeah, I don't like you, when you call it, you call it aha moment. I to me, I'm gonna call it a motivation moment. It's like when you've been working so hard and you done had your head down, like Barry, I know what it feel like to drive from goddamn Atlanta. King, I know you know what it feel like to drive from Atlanta to Texas and then from Texas to LA in the car. You know what I'm saying? Before before niggas can afford flights and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the motivation moments, I can still remember it was it was it was two moments I had. It was kind of crazy because this is it was Uzi and Cardi. They 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 did a show in Atlanta. They came back to Atlanta on their first tour. And we were supposed to do a 200 seater. We were supposed to do the loft. I mean, we were supposed to do vinyl, my bad. And then it just kept selling. And then we ended up selling out center stage. And when we sold out center stage, this is early in their career. And nobody in the, I'm from Atlanta. So you got to remember, I'm from Future. I'm from G's. I'm from Tip. So, you know what I'm saying? We got two artists, even though Uzi from Philly and Cardi from Atlanta. Niggas in Atlanta didn't know them niggas even existed. You see what I'm saying? So I can still remember them niggas performing on the stage, sold out show. And when these two little niggas, they went and crowd dived at the exact same time. And the crowd was holding them up together. And when the crowd was holding them together, them two niggas did a, a, a like a dap in the middle of the crowd, like while they was crowd surfing. That shit was just so cool, bro. I was just like, Damn, that shit was hard. You know what I'm saying? Man, that I can imagine, hard. bro. That was definitely a, a moment. It was like, okay, we on the song. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. we on the song. We we doing something. You see what I'm saying? Our yeah. last show in Atlanta was like that. that I felt that way last yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, the first I time drove from Buffalo ever. to Montana. I just want everybody to know I drove from Buffalo to Seattle. I just want niggas to know that was a that was a that was a day and a half drive. So, <laughs> That bus was the bus was my moment. <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, so we're probably we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, you know, my last question is for each of you guys: What is one piece of advice you would give yourself the day before you started in the music industry? I mean, my simple: Keep going. Keep going. Just keep going. That mind. Just keep going. Damn, my my advice I would give myself, I would give myself probably the same advice. Watch out for these rap ass, cap ass industry motherfuckers. Like that's how I look at it. Like it's just so much, it's just so much like keep your blinders on. You know what I'm saying? Stay like a stay like a, a it's a horse being blinded. Keep that finish line on track. Cause if you get sidetracked by the industry, oh my God, bro, you you'll get lost in the sauce. Uh, I think I, I would definitely tell myself <laughs> to, you know, be aware, be aware of your voice, be aware of your power. You have a lot of influence. I think, you know, young, young me wasn't as confident as I am now. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't follow my gut enough, but, you know, I think that's also something that you learn with confidence as, as things start going right. You're like, okay, 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 okay. But I think a lot of people kind of suffer from not um, giving themselves enough credit. I'm telling you, man, you can move mountains, bro, by just I saying know. something. Philip, that's when you figure out that at that point in your career, like, bro, they don't know what the fuck they talking about. What they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, because you, you look at all these people in the industry, bro. You know, when you're first coming in, 
and you, you look up to them and respect to them, respect to them, bro. Respect to them. Everybody got to grind. Everybody got to hustle. And everybody put the work in to get to where they got to. At the same time, man, you like, you know, once you start putting a couple points on the board, you like, wait a minute. This isn't as, as, you know, hard as I built it up to be. Like, hold on, let me, let me really get in my bag, you know? <laughs> hey. so it's like, it's like, that's what I would tell my younger self, man. Like, yo, respect your power, bro. Respect yourself, bro. Understand your influence. Understand the, the power of your voice, bro. Yeah, it's that cocky and confidence thing. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, different yeah. between being cocky and confidence. Confidence is just knowing what you know and knowing your That's vision. It, Cockiness is just being just careless at times. You know, yeah. You get, you get in this business, man, you realize that you sit at these tables, you sit at these things, like you say, everybody in this business, I respect because if you can be in it for a long period of time, that means you maintain some type of some type of success or a little bit of leverage or something, a great relationship, whatever it is, something you've maintained over a period of time. But bro, when you start sitting down, you start really realizing these don't—they don't know shit. They don't know shit. <laughs> like, they don't, they don't know no, shit. You be like, no, Wait a minute. bro. And you think that you need to do this. You think you need to know that. You think you need to do this. I'm telling you, bro. I then I got here where I'm at right now in my career by being a good person, being a stand-up guy. It's real. Always being, always being honest. Always being straight up and straightforward. And, and keeping a smile on my face, bro. If you ask anybody in this industry, if they met pain, they'll tell you, bro, I love him, bro. He always smiling, he always being a good, like, I'm a good guy, bro. And that was something that I always wanted um, to, to do when I started working in the music industry. I wanted to bring the integrity back because I felt like some things were, were, were a little bit shaky. I feel like the, the, the reputation of the music industry is like, yo, it's shady and the entertainment industry and this, that, and the other. It's like, okay, I want to be in the industry, but I, I, I want to do it with an integrity. I want to keep my morals and values. I want to be successful at it. And that's what, that's what I've done so far. And I, that's what I plan to do. Yeah. No, that's a perfect way to end it. I think we lost Carter, but that's all right. Um, no, this was perfect. Um, I just want to thank you guys for all of your time. I think, you know, we, we went through a lot of, um, a lot of great things. And I think a lot of people who, um are in where you guys used to be as far as position wise i think they're going to be able to take a lot from this so um i'm super excited again thank you guys so much for your time um and uh and yeah i guess that's i guess that's a wrap yeah man carter got a number one song for four weeks yeah you're chilling you don't need you know you what i'm saying you like that on call yo we got, no, yo. We got number one song you know I've been, I've been a Jack Harlow oh, well. fan since since mm -hmm. since the Dark Knight, bro. So that so, man, thank you, thank you for that. Appreciate thank you for that. Look, I appreciate bro. all y'all, man. Bro. Good to be on the phone call with some people that I respect in this. You know what I'm saying? Like family man. for real, for real. Uh, uh, did we get him? We might have got him. We might be back. You know, you probably had you know, <laughs> Mr. Number One, Mr. Number One on the Billboard probably had a phone yeah. call. Yeah. <laughs> okay to lose people like that. <laughs> no, nah, I, I don't know. I don't know where. where nah, I'm it's uh the only thing we were just wrapping up. Uh, just the piece of advice you give yourself before you the day before you got into the industry. I, I was I was hearing it chopping up. I heard what everybody's saying. I think I I would agree with everybody. Like keep keep going, um, just keep going, and 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 be aware and don't let nothing distract you. So. Keep your eye on the prize. That's that's the advice I give myself. Don't get lost in the sauce. Like.